Hey everybody, Adam Savage in my cave with a, a, a revisit to an old costume. Um, and perhaps you can tell what it is right behind me. Yes, my bear costume that I wore to San Diego Comic-Con a few years ago and dragged behind me the carcass of Leonardo DiCaprio. Um, I am getting ready to show off this costume again. Uh, and as such, I am finally tackling some things I never got around to tackling with this suit. Yeah, um, one specific thing was how the arms and legs attached to the body was never a permanent solution. Uh, so I'm gonna do that, but the biggest change I'm going to implement is the head. I'm gonna I'm gonna remake this bear head. I I've never loved it. I've never loved it. It was a it was a good solution. It was a fine call, Ripley, <laughs> for the moment in time I needed it, but I want to redo it. So that's the big thing. I'm gonna redo my bear costume head, um, and then once we finish, you know, we'll take it out on the road again. It'd be nice. To, I love this suit. I love this costume so much. It'd be really fun to get my big fat bear back up and running. Just to talk about what stopped working. Um, as you can see, it's made out of these uh, half inch wide, uh, like 30 thou thick, uh, stainless steel bones. Um, and <clears throat> for the arm attachment, what I have is uh, some hook on the inside of the arm, some Velcro hook, uh, and I had loop wrapped around the inside of the costume, right? So they would meet. And the way I attached the loop to the costume was I took the spar of, of white metal that you can see sticking out of the armhole there. And I wrapped this around the spar and then stuck it both to the spar and then at the top to itself. And I thought, it's never gonna let go because if there's one thing adhesive loves, it's not just sticking to things, it's sticking to itself. Reader, I was wrong. Um, yeah, this Velcro doesn't like holding on for years. It just doesn't, it slowly lets go. And so one of the arms fell off and then one of the legs fell off just standing up there. So a more positive solution for that, one. Uh, two is, yeah, the head. And the way I'm gonna work on the head is I'm actually gonna put up a piece of cardboard uh, and I'm gonna draw the head that I want and then I'm gonna make the head to match that drawing. <laughs> it looks fun. <laughs> Great. So I know where the put you. Put, put, put you. There is a bear on my bear poster. I made a poster called Elevations of Bear in conjunction with this. And um, there's a bear head that I drew back then when I was doing all my bear research. And here it is, there's the bear head. And I, I really like the gesture of this bear head. I was just trying to freehand it and it wasn't working. So what I'm gonna do is, <laughs> yeah, the high and the low, they meet, they get together, here we go. Okay, yeah, there we go. So, now I'm gonna see about transferring this. His ears are falling off. There's a bunch of work to do. It's definitely gonna be bigger than a one day build, but let's just see how we can do here. Yeah, so I've totally not gotten it right. Gotta stop putting the head down. I gotta make a stand for my head. I keep losing my head. All right. Uh, yeah, I'm holding this up until, <laughs> right? 
So this is what I'm doing. I'm holding it up until it, to my eye. Yep, yeah, there we go. Something like that. That's it. And then I'm gonna trace that onto the thing. Like so, let's see. Okay, so you see what I've done now. I have drawn a grid on there, and I've drawn a grid on here, and I'm going to use one of the oldest methods for transferring something between scales, the grid coordinate system, and it is really straightforward. Um, <clears throat> so, tip of the nose. The tip of the nose comes to uh, maybe there, traverses this corner here, and then comes back to here, right? Yeah. Now, come up over here. Oh, yeah, up there. And then this coordinate is here, so I'm gonna go up to here. Higher. Okay. I'm gonna get a big marker there and see how that translates. Wow, that's a big head. That might be too big a head. That might be too big a head. Good God, that's a big head. Well, that's the scale in the drawing that I made, but uh, clearly my drawing was way off. That head is just way, 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 way too gigantic. Way too ginormous. So uh, we're gonna try this again. That's much more reasonable. Ah, still, 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 it's missing. Oh, see? Wow. Yeah, sketching, man. That's, oh, wow. Holy cow. That was weird how quickly that shifted. Yeah, I really like how he looks. That's uh... this is why it's great to save cardboard, man. And that I can just keep on. I've got the front of the bear's head. I like it. I just don't like the transition back here up and the ear, and it's just a relationship I have to get right for me. This is working. Uh, 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 uh. Yeah, I'm getting closer to something. And the biggest issue I had is that the back, the back of my bear costume's head comes straight down, and in the drawing that I like, the bear's back comes down at an angle. And I can do that. Yeah, that's better. That's better. It's more, more bear-like. Where does his ear go? Where does his ear go? Does it go back here? I mean, I guess I can place the ears later. 
right? And get those right, but like. Yeah. Oh, man. I must say, I don't think of myself as an illustrator, and so I'm 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 kind of surprised that I got an illus that I got something I got some character out of there. I also yeah. Uh, that's the bear. That's my bear. It's just it's fundamentally different than this guy. I mean, they're really close. They're really close, and yet they're kind of far. It's that's 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 the deal. So, uh, right now I need to.
Okay. Uh, well, let's recap what's happened in the last uh, couple of hours. Uh, I completed a rough shape of a bear head. I'm pretty happy with it. Uh, I've given it a post to stand on. I covered it in green masking tape, and then I covered it in um, the same waterproof tape that Jamie and I used for the uh, aerodynamic motorcycle cowling. That should provide a release for the paper mache. And I know that this is like faceted and stuff, but all that faceting is gonna disappear. See, the fur is going to hide a lot of the crimes in the faceting here. Yeah. Um, so I'm about to make a mix of some Mod Podge and some water, and I'm gonna tear up a whole crap ton of craft paper, and I'm gonna get a layer of paper mache on this. That'll be... Uh, That'll bring us to the end of today for the bare head. And making it, one of the other things I did was I took a masking tape skull cap that I had used as an under cap for um, my Iron Man Mark I fiberglass inner helmet. And I've basically registered the bare head to my head. So once I pull off this paper mache, that's probably coming off in three parts. Yeah, and then I'll glue them back together uh, it should be really nicely light. Like that's, I'm very excited about that part. It should be very, very lightweight. Yeah. Um, I, I, I paused because I started thinking about future things and I don't need to think about future things. It's just time to get some paper mache on. Let's do it. on here except for like five or six pieces. It's good, it's a fair fair amount. Um, I'm just gonna keep on kind of riding this to tamp down tall spots and bumps and things. And again, all these crimes will be hidden by the fur, but it's nice to start out with a good framework. And this, I should be able to pull this tomorrow, honestly. I don't know, we'll see. Aren't you happy? I didn't make any bear puns. And I really like this bear shape. I'm very happy with them. All right, I think I can stop mucking around with it. Let's get this stuff cleaned up. Ooh, ah, wearing gloves for like an hour and a half. Feels gross. Well, there's our bear so far. I'm very happy. Uh, so this is, I still have the form inside this. It's still drying, but it's enough to do this. Oh, oh. So I just, I want to talk about corner cutting and compromise here in projects. Cause I'm all about cutting corners. I'm all about compromising and taking shortcuts and all that. That's, it's all great. A few places that I personally have learned to not take shortcuts. One is with some structural integrity. I try and overbuild things so that they're strong enough to handle what I want them to do. 
Um, this will sit on my head. It will be the most important part of this custom. And I may add in some camera stuff or animatronics or an opening mouth. I don't know, but I want to be able to accommodate all that. So I really, I made sure I went past my boredom and used all the paper on this. Second of all, and actually more importantly, is the shape. Um, I just, I'm really happy with the character that I can see in this beautiful bear face. Um, this one's, look, this one's not bad. I'm not gonna say that this is bad, but, and I know that they look really quite close to each other, but they don't, but they don't. Um, there's something much more, I'm looking for a character and I see it in this face. There's still some work to do to figure out how to bring it out. I got some beautiful big eyes, big eyes. Um, yeah. But this is still drying, it's still setting. I have to wait till it's fully set in order to cut it off. And I will cut it off like this. I'll make a cut right up the center seam and then I'll cut around the head. I'll pull that out. I'll pull these two halves apart and hopefully then gluing them back together will be relatively easy. Maybe even with some cardboard inside for structural integrity. Right now though, just more application of floor dryer. Oh, he's a handsome lad. All right, so I may, I may end up adjusting the, that right there. Just, just this little bump here, not sure. Cause he's a handsome boy. Uh, it has been a night, an overnight, and this feels good and stiff. I am going to start cutting it out. I'm gonna start here with the skull cap. And I am cutting it in the middle of this plane rather than on the edge of it because it provides for me a registration surface. That's really important for this kind of thing. I need to know how it wants to go back together. I'm gonna to get it back together. Okay, so this is potentially where we'll discover just how easy it will be to demold this. All right, this is, this is not gonna be totally easy, but we'll see what we can do. Yeah, there we go. Ah. Oh, All right, once I get this out, I may have to pull this whole thing out. Oi, oi. Yeah, okay, so I see it's still unset in some places here. Yeah. So I think I can assume from that that it's not completely set under here, which tells me that I should stop messing around with it. I'll let this one dry. Uh, it's the weekend, I decided to come in. Um, I just, uh, I've been, I've been pulling the innards out of this guy slowly, but surely just a piece at a time. It's incremental. I mean, I got a, just a ton of little chunks of cardboard like this and I'm just slowly yanking them out one by one. It's slowly getting to the inside of this guy to such a degree that, oh gosh, I'm really, ha <laughs> ha, I think I'm there. All right, here we go. I'm gonna pull out. Yeah, so we're pretty much open. That's it. There's all the masking tape. That waterproof tape is still in there, which is really boring. Um, I'm gonna, I don't know. I mean, it's nice. It's a nice light bear head. What? 
What? What? It's a great, great bear head. So, yeah. Well, uh, right, you saw this. I successfully managed to get this out. However, this is <laughs> the sticky waterproof tape is just, that's, this is where it lives now. It's on the inside of this. I should have gone with masking tape. I should have gone with masking tape. Hey, it turns out I should have gone with masking tape. Yeah. Um, this is no longer going to be, I mean, as awesome as this look is, I'm thinking of a new line of headwear. Um, hold on just a second. Here we go. Let's see. Oh, yeah. Let's see. There we go. Just call me Cap. Uh, as awesome as this bit of headgear is, this isn't going to be how I hold this bear head on my head. Um, I'm really pleased with its size. It's going to sit here like this. In order to have it be lightweight and awesome and have a good grab on my head, I'm going to use a hard hat. Yep. Uh, so I'm just going to clip off the little lip here and a couple of the lippy parts, and leave just the framework, and then this will like go into whoop like this. Yeah, man. Why try and solve a problem that has already been solved? In particular, I like these 3M helmet liners with the, with the clicky click. The clicky click's just better than the other stuff. I don't mean to get technical on you, but go for the clicky click. All right, um, time to trim. <laughs> the castings of my head tend to be a little large. Um, not because I have a big head, uh, I do have a big head, but specifically like you do a casting and then you turn it over and you fill it, it tends to be a little larger. So my cast, the castings of my head are always a little bit larger than they ought to. Um, dude, all right, I think I need to cut away some of this. We're going with a different hard hat. We're gonna go with the clear hard hat. This is without a doubt the weirdest hard hat I've ever come across. Uh, I'm gonna put, does it, does it, oh come on. Mm. Are you serious? Wait a second. Okay, fixed it, took a little while. All right, so now this has a lip all the way around it with which it can grab the bear head. Yeah, okay, good. Happy, happy avec. So we're gonna do a little bit of hot glue here. And we're also gonna do some rivet. There we go. Ooh, 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 ooh. 
That was the biggest engineering problem with the head. Now, it's time to solve the aesthetic problem with the head, which is, where do his eyes go? Where are his eyes? Where are his eyes? Below the snout, not above it. They're not up here, they're down here. The snout line creates a line, the eyes are underneath that. So it's only slightly wider than the snout. So it's like there and Hmm, that's better. Let's just darken those in. Mm -hmm. A little better. A little better. Got that dirt. <laughs> whoop, whoop. Yeah, they totally have a frown. Am I going to give them a mouth? I think hmm. I think that the eyes are even closer together. I'm gonna try them again. Try it. Wow. Just I mean, so many different subtle differences. If I darken these in here. I think you'll see so much subtlety in where those eyes actually are. And all of a sudden, I think you kind of, yeah, see, right? Like all of a sudden it starts to feel more like a bear. I know it still looks like a paper mache goof thing, but we're really, yeah, yeah, yeah. Much, much better, much better. I think I finally have something approaching a personality in, in this head. Now, in order to complete that, I've got to add some eyes and I've got some beautiful big brown eyes. I've got some gorgeous brown bear eyes for this bear. Yeah. Mm. Oh. They're glass, they're very strong. Um, so, I'm going to cut out these eye holes. All of a sudden, yeah. This doesn't work. I can just tape it back up.
Oh, yeah. Ah, oh my God, that's pretty. All right, I really want to figure out a way to make that work. Oh, ooh, pretty, pretty eyes. Yes, I also think that these guys might have, so I may cut those out to be bigger eyes, we'll see. But yeah, I'm really, I'm much more, <laughs> what I want to do is I want to set up an opening mouth like that, right? But I have, my hands are in the costume. So what I'm going to have to do is put like a ring on a string that goes out that like when I extend, say, my left arm all the way out, the mouth opens. So, rah, right? One of these hidden actuators. Ah, so that will require actually putting some framework in here as well as the mouth. Um, and then uh, making sure, yeah, so I'll have to figure out where the pivot points are. There's a whole set, a whole bit of engineering. I get to hide all that engineering underneath the fur here. And that's where this stuff comes in. Right, this guy. And the thing about the fur on the head here is that fur has a natural nap. It has a way that it wants to fall. It doesn't, it's not meant to stick straight up. It actually has a direction. Um, and so I want to actually follow the directions. For instance, on a bear's head, his hair moves outwards from the center line like this. So the nap is this direction on the face, but on the snout, it's down. It's more down. So I'll probably do this in several pieces where these are two down pieces plus an under jaw that'll be shaved really close. And then these guys will try to, you know, do this sort of hairstyle. And then once I figure that out, then I'll bring out the placement for this. <laughs> the moment you put that, it's just like each extra detail, wonderful. All right, but the next trick, it is, I don't know why I didn't see that the bear always has a, that all the bears have like a little bit of a frown in the beginning. I'm not unhappy. I just look that way. Yeah. Yeah. So the hinge point for a bear, for their jaw, is like back here. So, yeah, maybe like, maybe back here, maybe about there, give or take. I'm just gonna mark that as potential. Uh, yeah, see that? starting to feel like a thing here right so yeah the pivot oh yeah the pivot is here in the cheek i could even move a little bit farther back but i'm just a little nervous so I'm, i can cut that as many times as i like that's it there we are now we're getting somewhere
I am just using the um, half inch foam core here as a sort of structural medium to figure out the mechanics. And then once I have a form factor that works, I'm just trying to get a, right, uh, a holding system for the jaw that stays out of the way, right? See what I'm doing there? Arrgh. Right. So I think I could even. Yeah. Um, ooh, so uh, I got my cardboard form to a place that I like it, and now I am making it out of PVC. Uh, and I am just slowly going through the process of heating, of heat bending my PVC. This is quarter inch or six millimeter PVC, foam PVC, otherwise known as Sintra. Uh, in New Zealand, I believe it's called Sinex. Um, so I'm, oh yeah, sorry, you can see this, there we go. So I'm just uh, bending this piece so it conforms. And then I will. Great, great. Now I'm just gonna parallelize these edges and glue it all together so it makes a piece that looks like this. Yeah, there we go. So here is my PVC jaw insert. I've got a um, perpendicular bearing surface in this um, uh, 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 K&S brass. Uh, so the tube will come through the jaw like this, and then this will pivot on that. And it gives me a nice bit of tolerance there. So let's just uh, start looking at final placement for this jaw, because I think we're actually kind of close to a real placement for this jaw. Let's see here. <clears throat> Ooh, my PVC smell is really good. I'm just gonna try doing a um, hot glue tack here. Yep. A little bit here. That, um, I should be able to remove this, but... I'm getting excited. I'm, I, I, I'm, I'm enjoying this bear. I'm enjoying his face. We are at the stage where my paper mache head is ready and I like the control. I'm not sure how I'm going to uh, actually activate it, but it may be with one of my hands. Like I keep one hand in the suit and one hand just for operating the mouth. Roar! Roar! It's a good roar. Um, I may put some weight back here because I can feel how, uh, I can certainly feel how front heavy this is and I can feel that that would like, you know, start to work its magic on my neck. But we have a bear costume. Yes, we do. Ooh, let the dogs out. Um, and I'm so sorry. That just, that's required when, yeah. Anyway, um, 
<laughs> okay, so uh, yeah, the bear. I'm happy with the bear head. Are you really? Yes, I am. Well, good. Roar! Uh, I'm really happy. It's time to get some hair on this bald guy. Okay. But yeah, things are going well. <gasps> Better than I thought. Um, all right, if I'm gonna do hair, I gotta clean up, so. Uh, the next stage in the build is to pattern out our hasty orisons, is to pattern out um, how the fabric lays out across the bear head. And I'm gonna do that with a little bit of muslin. Let's have an update. I've patterned out, uh, I've done a rough pattern of the bear's head here. Um, yeah, yeah. I'm pretty happy with it. You are? Yeah, I am. Um, so I've done a rough pattern. I've labeled the parts and pieces. Um, down here where it drapes between the head and the, the, the chest, that's the next thing I need to figure out. So I'm actually gonna set this up and kind of trim my pattern to that, and then I can start cutting it out of the fur. What? So. Kind of enough. Let's see what we can get out of that. All right, uh, pattern's ready. I think what I need to do with it is to, yeah, start laying out my fur and start tracing the pattern out, yeah. This is the pattern for one side of my bear head. Now, there's a couple of things that are going on here in the marking. Uh, I have things labeled, I have things sort of placed where they go, so that seam marries there, these go together and then they marry to this one, there, this, etc. I've also drawn in green arrows the nap, the direction that the fabric wants to go in. There's some mix up with some of the arrows, but it's pretty straightforward. So now it's time for me to transfer this to some fur.
There you have it. Uh, so there is all the pattern pieces laid out on the fur. And I've laid them out. Their, 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 their orientation is in order to make sure that the nap is going the way that I want it to go. So now it's time. I think it's finally time. Pretty sure it's time. It's time to cut it all out. Cut it out! A note about cutting out fur. Um, the one way you really don't want to cut out fur is with a pair of scissors. Because if you cut through with a pair of scissors, as you can see, you cut through all this hair and then you end up with all this hair everywhere. Hey, eh? you cut through? Well, what is, what, what, what is that? That is, this is, it's not only problematic, but it ends up feeling like you've taken on a new pet because your whole shop gets filled with hair. So how do you deal with that? This is a technique I learned from master puppeteer Rick Lyon and his team in New Jersey. Uh, we will include a link in the comments below to the video, uh, the fin, the puppet that I made with Rick and his team. So here is how you cut this kind of fur. Uh, it's got a fabric back, as you can see, a woven back. You take a nice sharp X-Acto blade and you just, you just cut through the backing, just, just the backing. And the sharper your blade is, I mean, you should change it like every few, every few pattern pieces. But what's happening here is that I'm ending up only cutting through the back and I'm not ending up with a ton of wispy hairs. Yeah, it's freaking amazing, this technique. Um, so let's do it on a couple of pieces. Just for due diligence, I'll show you what I'm talking about. I'm gonna get a fresh X-Acto blade. So uh, these are the front neck flaps. Um, I simply, I start the cut and I'm spreading with my fingers as I'm going. Look at that. And you can totally see and here's the thing, I am certainly cutting through some of these little hairy hairs, but like a fraction that would happen normally. A fraction, I say. I will forever be grateful to Rick Lyon for this technique. I mean, not like he didn't teach me a ton of other stuff, but you know, this is the this turns out to be one of the most useful bits of information he and his folks imparted to me on that fateful day in his shop. There we go. And now all of our pieces are cut out. Whee! Okay, so uh, I think it's almost time to start placing these on the bear, but let me just... This get this will get a little confusing before it gets clear. This is the back of my bear's head, and I'm working on this all inside out with the parts labeled so I can see where they go. And I've been doing this in some sub-assemblies because it's way easier that way. Um, however, I'm about to do the hard part, which is the face. And in that case, I can't quite do it in some sub-assemblies. I kind of have to just go for it, but that's the next thing. We're doing that, yeah. 
I also recognize that like I you do see little hairs going everywhere. Yeah, it's a fraction of what they're where they would be going if I wasn't cutting this stuff correctly. Okay, so the jaw gets sewn right up to there. Let's do the bottom of the jaw first. Bottom of the jaw is sewn. Uh, here comes the... I put an extra reverso there because that is the hinge point of the jawline and a very important hinge point it is. All right, we're gonna do the tip of the snout here. This will be a very simple one. You know what's funny is that I recognize now that sewing patterns is a lot like doing wiring diagrams in which in the beginning, it's a lot of planning. In the middle, it is a lot of diagramming. And then at the, at the, 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 the meat of the operation is following your planning on faith because it looks like a big jumble like this, but you plug everything where it's supposed to go and you follow the map that you've drawn and you should end up with something complex that works. Same goes for wiring, same goes for sewing. That's kind of neat. All right, here we go. Let's... Um Okay, that's where the business end of this is, the nose. Oh, that should do. All right, so now we're gonna go this, we're gonna come up. Oh, uh, you know what? Let's do this one first. Oh, wow, there's like, four things that meet here. Okay, we're gonna do undo these and I'll do this top head. Yeah, good. Oh, I forgot this jawline. Yeah, let me do this one too. Yeah, I know, I know. I'm aware that I've done this in the wrong order. Just so just so we're clear, I know that I've made a mistake. I'm, I believe some of the more experienced sewers and tailors in the viewing audience see that I could have done this in a slightly different order and made my life a little bit easier. But, you know, this is actually also the first time I'm sewing fur without my Janome, which did that really nice sort of fake serger stitch. Ah, yeah, I haven't made too badly of a mistake though. Okay, so what else we got? Uh, okay, jaw. 
John, John. This John. Mm -hmm. So now it's this. Yeah, it's this business. I, I, I want to tell you about a thing that happens when I make a plan and I start to follow it like this is I become terrified I'm going to forget some giant piece of that plan. Um, I'm sure like I do that you, the viewer, might watch yourself some of those videos of people restoring old tools. And I want to tell you that I have I've noticed this minor anxiety in me when I watch people do that of like, I watch people like take apart car engines and throw all the bolts that they're removing into a bucket. And I'm like, how the hell are you gonna make sure it goes back in the right place? Do you have the mental fortitude to memorize all those things? Is that what you can still do with a young brain and I've just forgotten? Um, yeah, I like have total reassembly anxiety. I know, I know. I, I love James May and I love the reassembler and I wish that was my show. I wish I could do a guest slot. I wish I could host that show. But I also like realize that there's real drama in there for me because I feel totally anxious about like taking something apart and putting it back together. I know, I've spent my whole life taking stuff apart and putting it back together, but I thought it was worth admitting to you. Um, well, it's starting to look like a bear, an inside out bear. Okay, uh, yeah, we're just gonna, maybe here. Uh, yeah, we're gonna start there. That's how we're gonna do it. I can't even describe how much I love what this Sailrite sewing machine can eat for breakfast. It is such a beast. I'm like, I'm able to just like feed it giant chunks of furry cloth and just know that it's like never gonna slow down. The, the peace of mind, it's frankly intoxicating. Don't get me wrong, I, no, wait a second. Why, ah, that's why, yeah, I couldn't find it, there we go. Sorry, where was I? I was singing the virtues of the sale right. Yes, it is the sewing machine that can help you take your sewing, your sailboat around the world. And if you need to make a bear costume or two, well, it's, it fits that bill as well. Okay. That was the, the last scene. Um, there's still a bunch of work to do, but that was the last scene of the main part of the head, the main hairy part of the head. Okay, I'm just gonna... Time for some draping. I didn't pause to wonder if I could actually get this up and over the head. Wow. That's possible. Oh, no, nope, I can. Thanks. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. So this is the, yeah, this is the. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> All right. Oh, 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 oh okay. Mm -hmm. It is such a, it's just like, so hard to figure out where you stand, right? Like, yeah, that looks like a bear, all right. <laughs> yeah, that's the center part.
before I continue at all, I got to do some trimming. Oh, this is going to be a, a bit of a thing. I know, I know, I know. I mean, I must admit, I think that I over trimmed the last one. So I'm just, that's a zero. I'm going to go for a two here. Let's just see. And right now, If I don't seem like I'm giving a lot of instruction here, it's because I have no idea what I'm doing. I groom my dog Maggie poorly every couple of months. Um, and this is what I groom her with, my classic 76 Oster. Is this an Oster? Yeah, it is. Um, but as far as like, how am I gonna get the result that I'm looking for? Kind of stabbing around in the dark. I am, I, it seems like I'm learning how to blend a little bit. Already I feel like this is an improvement over the predecessor, but this is where I felt like a predecessor went off the rails. He looks like he's laughing at us. <laughs> oh, all right. All right, I wanna make it soft again. Well, if you're going to be doing some trimming of the hair of whatever fur you're using, yeah, you are definitely going to get clever with little hairs, as I am. However, uh, what I have learned here in playing around with this is that uh, I think I need a little more room here. I'm I'm taking a bold step. I'm I'm actually I'm actually I'm actually doing a little bit of gluing here. I'm I'm gluing the lower jaw down because well, I think it's time, frankly. I think it's necessary. And yeah, I think I'm close enough that I don't have to worry about bringing this off again. Um yeah. So I'm just putting in a, la a couple more little little sticks in here. Sorry, I'm doing a couple more little glue spots in here, little sticks. Yeah, this already. <laughs> just this shot, it looks so much better. Damn. Okay, so the lower jaw is almost glued. I need a couple more little. I'm getting used to get. Okay, now it's time for the upper jaw. Oh, you are a handsome lad, aren't you? Yeah, I'm actually going to give you a little bit of a. Kind of a
right? Yeah, yeah, okay. So the nose. Uh, it's kind of like I almost want to. Uh, I'll have to increase the sticky. The degree to which I am covered with hair is impossible to overstate. I'm like covered with a. Yeah, it's kind of gross. But nothing I can do about it, so just proceeding. All right, for gluing, hot glue is never a permanent solution, but when you're gluing like cloth to paper, it's pretty close. Um, I mean, if I had to undo this later, I certainly could, but I really don't think I'll need to. I'm gonna make myself a reference mark here. Um, I'm gonna cover this with a black nose. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna come in here and lay a bead like here and up there, and that'll give you a reference point so I don't get too far into the weeds. Uh, I'm really in the weeds with this David S. Pumpkins thing. Okay, there we go. Time is of the essence. We're gonna, yep, gonna do that, we're gonna do that. And yeah, there we go. Okay, so that part's down. Great. Oh, it's wonderful. Um, and now I'm gonna do, wait, I've gotta jam his mouth open. And now I'm gonna do uh, this bit. I'm gonna like that. Nope, oh, that's the end of that hot glue stick. Great. So, pulling down, pulling down just to create a little bit of extra tension. Good. Good. Rawr. Rawr. <laughs> ooh, ooh, ooh. Hello. Oh my God, he's adorable. Rawr. Rawr. I'm attempting to secure some extra skin under the chin. Now, the mouth was having trouble closing and it was because it was pulling up the weight of the front chest flap. So I'm gonna put a little hot glue here at the front chin placement, kind of run that off at the pass. Yeah, I know, it's not, this is hard. It's very, very difficult to get this to kind of lay in a way that feels right and like a thing. My bear suit proceeds, and I think it's time to talk about a kind of a, a check-in here because uh, like, oh yeah. Huh. Yeah, there we go. Whoop. See here. What kind of check-in were you thinking of? Well, I'll explain. This is not what I'm really good at. This type of construction, this a face, a character. Uh, I add, I you know, I do lots of costuming and I add character to costume and I have ways that I do that. But as far as like creating a character out of a face, I, it's not that I'm bad at it. It's just that it's not something that I do every day. And so as I follow the process, I'm ending up with something that is different than what I intended. I was hoping that this mask, that this bear head would be scary. Like I wanted a kind of, I wanted a little bit of a menace. I like the idea of a bear costume that feels like what an actual bear feels like, which is a giant, big, scary monster type of thing that's also weirdly cute. I mean, just look at that, right? Both of those things are going on. 
And yet somehow I've ended up one that looks like a Shiba Inu or like also a little like my Terrier Maggie. And when I look at it on camera, boy, it's very different than it looks like in person. I mean, it's just trying to get used to it. But here I am in this stage in the build, I'm like a couple of days in, three days into this construction, four now. Um, and what I've ended up with is it's just, it's cute, but that's not what my original goal was. But again, follow the process, not the plan. Yeah, I gotta admit like, well, that's what I ended up with. All the people in Georgia making that decision. Um, so the question is, the question is, do I just let this go like this? And, I, and the answer is, yeah, the answer is, yes, I do. I, not let this go, but like, I'm following the plan. And as far as a big, large head for this bear, I'm, I couldn't be happier with this. Here is his predecessor, a lot more beady eyed. And I mean, this isn't a bad character per se, but I know he's missing an ear and he's neglected. I will fix him up. I'm not gonna abandon this head, but I'm like, I consider this a vast improvement over its predecessor and still um, in some key ways for me, not what I was originally thinking of. But again, this is like, I'm building this also in a specific way that I'm used to, right? A, a real, a real, there are many other ways to execute this. You can sculpt the head from scratch and then cover it with a finer fur. Uh, there are all sorts of experiential knowledge. There's all sorts of experiential knowledge that someone who did this on the regular would have that I don't have. My God, my mouth is really off center. Um, like I know it feels like I'm a little bit all over the map with my description of this, and that's because I am. Uh, you know, I'm... Uh, I mean, I think my biggest issue here is that the lower lip comes out too far, and I'm not sure how to push it back. Um, but sorry, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm just talking about the cuteness and of like executing something that's not precisely what you originally intended to execute, even though I think when I put this on the bear suit, it's gonna be awesome. Um, and I left last night, I took a whole bunch of shots of me with it to kind of moon over at home and think about. And I woke up this morning, I looked at them and I'm like, it's a real character. I, I mean, I'm got dialing into a real, uh, an actual character. It might not be the one I intended, but again, what comes out of the bench is what comes out of the bench. Yeah, that's where we are. Uh, all right, so playing around with the jaw and other stuff. Let's see if I can't push this jaw in. Ah! I think I might be able to push this jaw back. Right, let's see. I will say one thing that's happening as I'm working on this guy is every time I make eye contact with him, I feel like I'm looking at a person I, or a being. I'm looking at a being. So that's great. That's, that's what you want. You want to be able to think that you're seeing somebody. Come on, let's get this jaw in there. There we go. There we go. Got it. Whew! Jeez, crap. All right. There we go. That has pulled out the liner. Good. This is the last of it. Good. Okay. Okay, so I'm gonna throw a little hot glue at the bottom of this to kind of get this lined up. Same way I did it before. Yeah, it's a good face. Hey, right. that should be what I was looking for. I'm just gonna hold it there for a few minutes. The thing that I was saying before about my approach to this is that it's like, 
there are top-down approaches to animal costumes, right? Like sculpt it from scratch, you flock the fur on, etc. All those ways in which we can bring stuff to fruition um, and try and hit those original marks we had. Okay, so now I've got that, right? That, yeah. Sounds like it. Yeah. I was like, oh, 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 oh. Too soon, too soon. I got too optimistic. Okay. Just gonna hold it there. Mm-hmm. Much better. Much better. Much better. Roar. Yeah. Okay. So now let's get this guy in here. Well, there is my old bear costume and my old bear mask. Uh, and I've spent the last few days making a new bear mask. And I gotta say, I'm really happy with it. It's not as menacing as I was hoping my bear would be, but it's a character. And unlike that one, I feel like it's a real character. Yeah. I think my name is Gus. Uh, there you have it. Uh, <laughs> a confusing, concerning, educational one day build. I'm, I, I, I'm really pleased. I know I ended up making a, like a puppy. And honestly, his face is not too dissimilar from my dog Maggie's. Uh, there's, there's a lot of parity, uh, but I'm really, really pleased with this. I think it, really completes the bear costume in a magnificent way. And of course, I'm gonna put it on before the end of this video, but uh, seemed like a reasonable time to thank you guys for joining me for this one day build. how great this was for dancing. I, I know, he's not as menacing as I was hoping, but he certainly is adorable. This is a hot costume. Thank you guys for joining me for this one day build. I will see you out in the forest. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching that video. If you'd like to further support us at Tested, you can do so by buying some merch from us in our store. A link is below, but I wanted to tell you that for the first time, we are releasing a discounted bundle of Tested merch, specifically our original five demerit badges. These are ways in which every maker screws up. So we've got the measure once, curse twice, uh, releasing the mysterious blue smoke from electronics and stopping them from working breaking a drill bit, uh, 3D printer going all flying spaghetti monster on you, and my personal most common one, cutting your finger. <laughs> yeah. Get yourself over to tested-store.com and uh, line yourself up with some demerit badges. I'm going to sew these to my apron. Oh, that actually would make a good one-day build.